audio books don't just read ncert listen it and feel it chapter 1 physical world what is physics human have always been curious about the world around them The night sky with its bright celestial objects has fascinated humans since time immemorial. The regular repetitions of day and night, the annual cycle of seasons, the eclipse, the tides, the volcanoes, the rainbow have always been a source of wonder. The world has an astonishing variety of material and a bewildering diversity of life and behavior. The inquiring and imaginative human mind has responded to the wonder and awe of nature in different ways. One kind of response from the earliest time has been to observe the physical environment carefully. Look for any meaningful patterns and relations in natural phenomena and build and use new tools to interact with nature. This human endeavor led in course of time to modern science and technology. The word science originate from Latin verb scientia, meaning to know. The Sanskrit word vijnan and the Arabic word ilm convey similar meaning, namely knowledge. Science in a broad sense is as old as human species. The early civilization of Egypt, India, China, Greece, Mesopotamia and many others made vital contribution to its progress. From the 16th century onwards, great strides were made in science in Europe. By the middle of 20th century, science had become a truly international enterprise with many cultures and countries contributing to its rapid growth. What is science and what is so called scientific method? Science is a systematic attempt to understand natural phenomena in as much detail and depth as possible and use the knowledge so gained to predict, modify and control phenomena. Science is exploring, experimenting and predicting from what we see around us. The curiosity to learn about the world unraveling the secrets of nature is the first step towards the discovery of science the scientific method involves several interconnected steps systematic observations controlled experiments qualitative and quantitative reasoning mathematical modeling prediction and verification or falsification of theories speculation and conjecture also have a place in science but ultimately a scientific theory to be acceptable must be verified by relevant observations or experiments there is much philosophical debate about the nature and method of science that we need not discuss here the interplay of theory and observation or experiment is basic to the progress of science science is ever dynamic there is no final theory in science and no unquestioned authority among scientists as observations improve in detail and precision or experiments yield new results theory must be account for them if necessary by introducing modifications sometime the modifications may not be drastic and may lie within the framework of existing theory for example when john kepler examined the extensive data on planetary motion collected by tycho brahe the planetary circular orbits in helicocentric theory sun at the center of the solar system imagined by nicolaus copernicus had to be replaced by elliptical orbits to fit the data better occasionally however the existing theory is simply unable to explain new observations this caused a major upheaval in science In the beginning of the 20th century it was realized that Newtonian mechanics till then a very successful theory could not explain some of the most basic feature of atomic phenomena similarly the then expected wave picture of light failed to explain the photoelectric effect properly this led 
to the development of a radically new theory, quantum mechanics, to deal with atomic and molecular phenomena. Just as a new experiment may suggest an alternative theoretical model, a theoretical advance may suggest what to look for in some experiments. A results of experiment scattering of alpha particles by gold foil in 1911 by Ernst Rutherford established a nuclear model of the atom, which then became the basis of quantum theory of hydrogen atom given in 1913 by Niels Bohr. On the other hand, the concept of antiparticle was introduced theoretically by Paul Dirac in 1930 and confirmed two years later by experimental discovery of positron anti-electron by Carl Anderson. Physics is a basic discipline in the category of natural sciences, which also includes other disciplines like chemistry, biology. The word physics comes from a Greek word meaning nature. Its Sanskrit equivalent is bhotiki, that is used to refer to the study of physical world. A precise definition of this discipline is neither possible nor necessary. We can broadly describe physics as a study of basic laws of nature and their manifestations in different natural phenomena. The scope of physics is described briefly in the next section. Here we remark on two principal thirsts in physics, unification and reduction. In physics, we attempt to explain diverse physical phenomena in terms of a few concepts and laws. The effort is to see the physical world as manifestation of some universal laws in different domains and conditions. For example, the same law of gravitation given by Newton describes the fall of an apple to the ground, the motion of moon around the earth and the motion of planets around the sun. Similarly, the basic laws of electromagnetism Maxwell's equation govern all electric and magnetic phenomena. The attempts to unify fundamental force of nature reflect the same quest for unification. A related effort to this drive the property of a bigger, more complex system from properties and interaction of its constituent simpler parts. This approach is called reductionism and is at the heart of physics. For example, the subject of thermodynamics developed in 19th century deals with bulk system in terms of macroscopic quantities such as temperature, internal energy, entropy, etc. Subsequently, the subjects of kinetic theory and statistical mechanics interrupted these quantities in terms of properties of molecular constituents of bulk system. In particular, the temperature was seen to be related to average kinetic energy of molecules of the system. Scope and Excitement of Physics We can get some idea of the scope of physics by looking at its various sub-disciplines. Basically, there are two domains of interest, microscopic and macroscopic. The macroscopic domain includes phenomena at laboratory, terrestrial and astronomical scales. The microscopic domains include atomic, molecular and nuclear phenomena. Classical physics deals mainly with macroscopic phenomena and includes subjects like mechanics, electrodynamics, optics and thermodynamics. Mechanics founded on Newton's laws of motion and laws of gravitation is concerned with the motion or equilibrium of particles, rigid and deformable bodies and general system of particles. The propulsion of a rocket by a jet of ejecting gases, propagation of water waves or sound waves in the air, the equilibrium of a bent rod under a load, etc. are the problems of mechanics. Electrodynamics deals with electric and magnetic phenomena associated with charge and magnetic bodies. Its basic laws were given by Coulomb, Oersted, Ampere and Faraday and encapsulated by Maxwell in his famous set of equations. The motion of a current-carrying conductor in magnetic field, the response of a circuit to an AC voltage, the working of an antenna, the propagation of radio waves in the ionosphere, etc. are the problems of electrodynamics. Optics deals with the phenomena involving light. 
the working of telescopes and microscopes, colors exhibited by thin films, etc. Other topics in optics. Thermodynamics, in contrast to mechanisms, does not deal with the motion of objects as a whole. Rather, it deals with the system in macroscopic equilibrium and is concerned with the changes in internal energy, temperature, entropy, etc. of the system through the external world and the transfer of heat. The efficiency of heat engines and refrigerators, the direction of a physical or a chemical process, etc. are the problems of interest in thermodynamics. The microscopic domain of physics deals with the constitution and structure of matter at the minute scales of atom and nuclei and even lower scales of length and their interactions with different probes such as electrons photons and other elementary particles classical physics is inadequate to handle this domain and quantum theory is currently accepted as the proper framework for explaining microscopic phenomena. Overall, the edifice of physics is beautiful and imposing and you will appreciate it more as you pursue the subject. You can now see that the scope of physics is truly vast. It covers a tremendous range of magnitudes of physical quantities like length, mass, time, energy, etc. At one end, it studies phenomena at a very small scale of length, involving electrons, protons, etc. At the other end, it deals with astronomical phenomena at the scale of galaxies or even the entire universe, whose extent is of the order of 10 to the power 26 meters. The two length scales differ by a factor of 10 to the power 40 or even more. The range of the time scales can be obtained by dividing the length scales by a speed of light, that is, 10 to the power minus 22 seconds to 10 to the power 18 seconds. The range of mass goes from, say, 10 to the power minus 30 kg mass of an electron to 10 to the power 55 kgs mass of unknown observable universe. Terrestrial phenomena lie somewhere in the middle of this range. Physics is exciting in many ways. To some people, the excitement comes from the elegance and universality of its basic theory, from the fact that a few basic concepts and laws can explain phenomena covering a large range of magnitude of physical quantities. To some others, the challenge in carrying out imaginative new experiments to unlock the secrets of nature. To verify or refute theories is thrilling. Applied physics is equally demanding. Applications and exploitation of physical laws to make useful device is most interesting and exciting part and requires great ingenuity and persistence of efforts. What lies behind the phenomenal progress of physics in the last few centuries? Great progress usually accompanies change in our basic perceptions. First, it was realized that for scientific progress, only qualitative thinking, though no doubt important, is not enough. Quantitative measurements is central to the growth of science, especially physics, because the laws of nature happen to be expressible in precise mathematic equations. The second most important insight was that the basic laws of physics are universal. The same laws apply in widely different contexts. Lastly, the strategy of approximation turned out to be very successful. Most observed phenomena in daily life are rather complicated manifestations of the basic laws. Scientists recognize the importance of extracting the lie essential features of a phenomena from its less significant aspects. It is not practical to take into account all the complexities of a phenomena in one go. A good strategy is to focus first on the essential features, discover the basic principles and then introduce corrections to build a more refined theory of the phenomena. For example, a stone and a feather dropped from the same height do not reach the ground at the same time. 
The reason is that essential aspects of the phenomena, namely free fall under gravity, is complicated by presence of air resistance. To get the law of free fall under gravity, it's better to create situations wherein the air resistance is negligible. We can, for example, let the stone and the feather fall through a long evacuated tube. In that case, the two objects will fall almost at the same rate, giving the basic law that acceleration due to gravity is independent of the mass of object. With the basic law this found, we can go back to the feather, introduce corrections due to air resistance, modify the existing theory and try to build a more realistic theory of objects falling to the earth under gravity. Hypothesis, Axioms and Models One should not think that everything can be proved with physics and mathematics. All physics and also mathematics is based on assumptions, each of which is variously called a hypothesis or axiom or postulate etc. For example, the universal law of gravitation proposed by Newton is an assumption or hypothesis which he proposed out of his ingenuity. Before him, there were several observations, experiments and data on the motion of planets around the sun, motion of moon around the earth, pendulums, body falling towards the earth, etc. Each of these required a separate explanation which was more or less qualitative. What the universal law of gravitation says is that if we assume that any two bodies in the universe attract each other with a force proportional to the product of their masses and universally proportional to the square of the distance between them, then we can explain all these observations in one stroke. It not only explains these phenomena, it also allows us to predict the results of future experiments. A hypothesis is a supposition without assuming that it is true. It would not be fair to ask anybody to prove the universal law of gravitation because it cannot be proved. It can be verified and substantiated by experiments and observations. An axiom is a self-evident truth, while a model is a theory proposed to explain observed phenomena. But you need not to worry at this stage about the nuance in using these words. For example, next year you will learn about Bohr's model of hydrogen atom, in which Bohr assumed that an electron in the hydrogen atom follows certain rules, postulates. Why did he do that? There was a large amount of spectroscopic data before him which no other theory could explain. So Bohr said that if we assume that an atom behaves in such a manner, we can explain all these things at once. Einstein's special theory of relativity is also based on two postulates, the constancy of the speeds of electromagnetic radiations and validity of the physical laws in an inertial frame of reference. It would not be wise to ask somebody to prove that the speed of light in vacuum is constant independent of the source or observer. In mathematics too, we need axioms and hypotheses at every stage. Euclid's statement that parallel lines never meet is a hypothesis. This means that if we assume this statement, we can explain several properties of straight lines and two or three dimensional figures made out of them. But if you don't assume it, you are free to use a different axiom and get a new geometry, as has indeed happened in the past few centuries and decades. Physics, Technology and Society The connection between physics, technology and society can be seen in many examples. The discipline of thermodynamics arose from the need to understand and improve the working of heat engines. The steam engine, as we know, is inseparable from the Industrial Revolution in England in 18th century, which had great impact on the course of human civilization. Sometimes technology gives rise to new physics. 
at other times physics generates new technology an example of the later is wireless communication technology that followed the discovery of basic laws of electricity and magnetism in 19th century the application of physics are not always easy to foresee as late 1933 the great physicist ernst rutherford had dismissed the possibility of tapping energy from atoms but only a few years later in 1938 han and meitner discovered the phenomena of neutron induced fission of uranium which would serve as the basis of nuclear power reactors and nuclear weapons yet another important example of physics giving rise to technology is the silicon chip that triggered the computer revolution in the last 3 decades of the 20th century A most significant area to which physics has and will contribute is the development of alternative energy sources. The fossil fuels of the planet are dwindling fast, and there is an urgent need to discover new and affordable sources of energy. Considerable progress has already been made in this direction. For example, in conversion of solar energy geothermal energy etc into electricity but much more is still to be accomplished table 1.1 lists some great physicists their major contribution and country of origin you will appreciate from this table that multicultural international character of the scientific endeavor Table 1.2 lists some important technologies and the principles of physics they are based on. Obviously, these tables are not exhaustive. We urge you to try to add many names and items to these tables with the help of your teachers, good books, on websites and science. You will find that this exercise is very educative and is also a great fun. and assuredly it will never end the progress of science is unstoppable physics is the study of nature and natural phenomena physicists try to discover the rules that are operating in nature on the basis of observations experimentations and analysis physics deals with certain basic rules or laws governing the natural world what is the nature of physics laws We shall now discuss the nature of fundamental forces and laws that govern the diverse phenomena of the physical world. Table 1.1 Some physicists from different countries of the world and their major contribution. Name Archimedes major contribution or discovery principle of buoyancy principle of the lever country of origin Greece Galileo Galilei law of inertia Italy Christian Huygens wave theory of light Holland Isaac Newton universal law of gravitation laws of motion reflecting telescope UK Michael Faraday laws of electromagnetic induction UK James Clerk Maxwell electromagnetic theory light and electromagnetic wave UK Hernik Rudolf Hertz generation of electromagnetic waves Germany GC Bose ultra short radio waves India WK Ronjan X-rays Germany JJ Thomson electron UK Marie Curie discovery of radium and polonium studies on natural radioactivity Poland Albert Einstein explanation of photoelectric effect and theory of relativity germany victor francis hess cosmic radiation austria r a milligan measurement of electronic charge usa ernst rutherford nuclear model of atom new zealand nails bohr quantum model of hydrogen atom denmark c v raman in elastic scattering of light by molecules india louis victor de broglie wave nature of matter france 
एम एन सहा थर्मल आयनाइजेशन इंडिया एस एन बोस क्वांटम स्टैटिस्टिक्स इंडिया वर्ल्फ गैंग पॉली एक्सक्लूजन प्रिंसिपल ऑस्ट्रिया एनरिको फर्मी कंट्रोल्ड न्यूक्लियर फिजन इटली वर्नर हेजनबर्ग क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स एंड अर्सन अनसर्टेनिटी प्रिंसिपल जर्मनी पॉल डायरेक रिलेटिविस्टिक थियोरी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड क्वांटम स्टैटिस्टिक्स यूके एडविन हबल एक्सपैंडिंग यूनिवर्स यू एस ए ऑल रैंडो लॉरेंस साइक्लोट्रॉन यू एस ए जेम्स शैडविक न्यूट्रॉन यू के हेडिकी योकावा थियोरी ऑफ न्यूक्लियर फोर्सेज जैपैन होमी जहांगीर भाबा कैस्केट प्रोसेस ऑफ कॉस्मिक रेडिएशन इंडिया लेफ्ट डेविडोविक लॉन्डो थियोरी ऑफ कंडेंस्ड मैटर एंड लिक्विड हीलियम रशिया एस चंद्रशेखर चंद्रशेखर लिमिट स्ट्रक्चर एंड एवोल्यूशन ऑफ स्टार इंडिया जॉन बर्डीन ट्रांजिस्टर्स थियोरी ऑफ सुपर कंडक्टिविटी यू एस ए सी एच टाउंस मैजर एंड लेजर यू एस ए अब्दुल सलाम यूनिफिकेशन ऑफ वीक एंड इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंटरेक्शंस पाकिस्तान टेबल वन पॉइंट टू लिंक बिटवीन टेक्नोलॉजी एंड फिजिक्स टेक्नोलॉजी स्टीम इंजन साइंटिफिक प्रिंसिपल लॉज ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर कंट्रोल न्यूक्लियर फिजन रेडियो एंड टेलीविजन जेनरेशन प्रोपोगेशन डिटेक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स कंप्यूटर्स डिजिटल लॉजिक लेजर्स लाइट एम्प्लीफिकेशन बाय स्टिमुलेटेड एमिशन ऑफ रेडिएशन प्रोडक्शन ऑफ अल्ट्रा हाई मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सुपर कंडक्टिविटी रॉकेट प्रोपल्शन न्यूटन्स लॉज ऑफ मोशन इलेक्ट्रिक जेनरेटर फैरडेज लॉ ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक इंडक्शन हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रिक पावर कन्वर्जन ऑफ ग्रेविटेशनल पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इन टू इलेक्ट्रिक एनर्जी एरोप्लेन बर्नॉलीज प्रिंसिपल्स इन फ्लूड डायनेमिक्स पार्टिकल एक्सेलरेशन मोशन ऑफ चार्ज पार्टिकल इन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक फील्ड सोनार रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउनिक वेव्स ऑप्टिकल फाइबर्स टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ लाइट नॉन रिफ्लेक्टिंग कोटिंग्स थिन फिल्म ऑप्टिकल इंटरफेरेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप वेव नेचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन फोटोसेल फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट फ्यूजन टेस्ट रिएक्टर मैग्नेटिक कन्फाइनमेंट ऑफ प्लाज्मा जॉइंट मेटोवेव रेडियो टेलीस्कोप डिटेक्शन ऑफ कॉस्मिक रेडियो वेव्स बोस आइंस्टाइन कंडेंसेट Trapping and cooling of atoms by laser beams and magnetic fields. One point four fundamental forces in nature. We all have an intuitive notion of force. In our experience, force is needed to push, carry, or throw objects, deform or break them. We also experience the impact of forces on us, like when moving an object hits us or we are in a merry-go-round. Going from this intuitive notion to the proper scientific concept of force is not a trivial matter. Early thinkers like Aristotle had wrong ideas about it. The correct notion of force was arrived by Isaac Newton in his famous Laws of Motion. He also gave an explicit form for the force for gravitational attraction between two bodies. We shall learn these matter in subsequent chapters. In the macroscopic world, beside the gravitational force, we encounter several kind of forces: muscular forces, contact forces between the bodies, friction, which is also a contact force parallel to the surface in contact, the force exerted by compressed and elongated springs and taut springs. ropes tension the force of buoyancy and vicious force when solids contact with fluids the force due to pressure of a fluid the force due to surface tension of a liquid and so on there are also forces involving charged and magnetic bodies in the microscopic domain again we have electric and magnetic forces nuclear forces involving protons and neutrons interatomic and intramolecular forces etc 
We shall get familiar with some of these forces in later part of this course. A great insight of the 20th century physics is that these different forces occurring in different contexts actually force in nature. For example, the elastic springs force arise due to the net attraction or repulsion between the neighboring atoms of the spring when the spring is elongated or compressed. This net attraction or repulsion can be traced to the unbalanced sum of the electric forces between the charged constituents of the atom. In principle, this means that the laws for derived force such as spring force friction are not independent of the laws of fundamental forces in nature. The origin of these derived forces is however very complex. At present stage of our understanding, we know of four fundamental forces in nature, which are described in brief here. 1. Gravitational force. The gravitational force is the force of mutual attraction between any two objects by virtue of their masses. It is a universal force. Every object experiences this force due to every other object in the universe. All objects on the earth, for example, experience the force of gravity due to the earth. In particular, gravity governs the motion of the moon and artificial satellites around the earth, motion of earth and planets around the sun, and of course the motion of falling bodies to the earth. It plays a key role in the large-scale phenomena of the universe, such as formation and evolution of stars, galaxies, and glacial clusters. 2. Electromagnetic force Electromagnetic force is the force between charged particles. In the simpler case, when charges are at rest, the force is given by Coulomb's law, attractive for unlike charges and repulsive for like charges. Charges in motion produce magnetic effect and a magnetic field give rise to a force on a moving charge. Electric and magnetic effects are in general inseparable, hence the name electromagnetic force. Like gravitational force, electromagnetic force act over large distance and does not need any intervening medium. It is enormously strong compared to gravity. The electric force between the two protons, for example, is 10 to the power 36 times the gravitational force between them for any fixed distance. Matter, as we know, consists of elementary charged constituents like electron and protons. Since the electromagnetic force is so much stronger than the gravitational force, it dominates all phenomena at atomic and molecular scales. The other two forces, as we shall see, operate only at nuclear scales. Hence, it is mainly the electromagnetic force that governs the structure of atom and molecules, the dynamic of chemical reactions and the mechanical, thermal and other properties of materials. It underlies the macroscopic forces like tension, friction, normal force, spring force, etc. Gravity is always attractive, while electromagnetic force can be attractive or repulsive. Another way of putting it is that mass comes only in one variety, there is no negative mass. But charge comes in two varieties, positive and negative. This is what makes all the difference. Matter is mostly electrically neutral, net charge is zero. This electric force is largely zero and gravitational force dominates terrestrial phenomena. Electric force manifests itself in atmosphere where the atoms are ionized and that leads to lightning. If we reflect a little the enormous strength of the electromagnetic force compared to gravity is evident in our daily life. When we hold a book in our hand, we are balancing the gravitational force on the book due to the huge mass of the earth by normal force provided by our hand. The latter is nothing but the net electromagnetic force between the charged constituents of our hand and the book at the surface in contact. If electromagnetic force were not intrinsically so much stronger than gravity, the hand of the strongest man 
would crumble under the weight of a feather. Indeed, to be consistent, in that circumstance, we ourselves would crumble under our own weight. 3. Strong Nuclear Force The strong nuclear force binds protons and neutrons in a nucleus. It is evident that without some attractive force, a nucleus will be unstable due to the electric repulsion between its proton. This attractive force cannot be gravitational since force of gravity is negligible compared to the electric force. A new basic force must therefore be invoked. The strong nuclear force is the strongest of all fundamental forces, about 100 times the electromagnetic force in strength. It is charged independent and acts equally between a proton and a proton and a neutron and a neutron and a proton and a neutron. Its range is, however, extremely small of about nuclear dimensions 10 to the power minus 15 meter. It is responsible for the stability of nuclei. The electron, it must be noted, does not experience this force. Recent developments have, however, indicated that protons and neutrons are built out of still more elementary constituents known as quarks. 4. Weak Nuclear Force The weak nuclear force appear only in certain nuclear processes such as beta decay of nucleus. In the beta decay, the nucleus emits an electron and an uncharged particle called neutrino. The weak nuclear force is not as weak as gravitational force, but much weaker than the strong nuclear and electromagnetic forces. The range of weak nuclear force is exceedingly small of order of 10 to the power minus 16 meters. Towards Unification of Forces We remarked in section 1.1 that unification is the basic quest in physics. Great advances in physics often amounts to unification of different theories and domains. Newton unified terrestrial and celestial domains under a common law of gravitation. The experimental discoveries of Orsted and Faraday showed that electric and magnetic phenomena are in general inseparable. Maxwell unified electromagnetism and optics with a discovery that light is an electromagnetic wave. Einstein attempted to unify gravity and electromagnetism but couldn't succeed in this venture. But this does not deter physicists from zealously pursuing the goal of unification of forces. Recent decades have seen much progress on this front. The electromagnetic and the weak nuclear force have now been unified and are seen as aspect of a single electroweak force. What this unification actually means cannot be explained here. Attempts have been and are being made to unify the electroweak and the strong force and even to unify the gravitational force with the rest of the fundamental forces. Many of these ideas are still speculative and inconclusive. Table 1.4 summarizes some of the milestones in the progress towards the unification of force. Table 1.4 Progress in unification of different force or domains in nature Isaac Newton 1687 Achievement in unification Unified celestial and terrestrial mechanics and showed that the same laws of motion and laws of gravitation apply to both the domains. Hans Christian Orsted 1820 and Michael Faraday 1830 showed that electric and magnetic phenomena are inseparable aspects of a unified domain, electromagnetism. James Clerk Maxwell, 1873, unified electricity, magnetism and optics, showed that light is an electromagnetic wave. Sheldon Glashow, and Abdus Salam, Steven Weinberg, Carlo Rubio, Simon van der Meer, in 1979 and 1984, showed that a weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force could be viewed as different aspects of a single electroweak force and verified experimentally the prediction of the theory of electroweak force. Nature of Physics Laws 
physicists explored the universe. Their investigation based on scientific process ranged from particles that are smaller than the atoms in size to stars that are very far away. In addition to the finding the fact by observation and experimentation, physicists attempt to discover the laws that summarize, often as mathematical equations, these facts. In any physical phenomena governed by different forces, several quantities may change with time. A remarkable fact is that some special physical quantities, however, remain constant in time. They are the conserved quantities of nature. Understanding this conversation principle is very important to describe observed phenomena quantitatively. For motion under an external conservative force, the total mechanical energy, that is the sum of kinetics and potential energy of a body is constant. The familiar example is the free fall of object under gravity. Both the kinetic energy of the object and its potential energy change continuously with time, but the sum remains fixed. If the object is released from rest, the initial potential energy is completely converted into the kinetic energy of the object just before it hits the ground. This law Restricted for a conservative force should not be con confused with the general law of conservation of energy of an isolated system, which is the basis of the first law of thermodynamics. The concept of energy is central to physics and the expression of energy can be written for every physical system. When all the forms of energy, example heat, mechanical energy, electrical energy, etc. are counted, it turns out that energy is conserved. The general law of conservation of energy is true for all forces and for any kind of transformation between the different forms of energy. In the falling object example, if you include the effect of air resistance during the fall and see the situation after the object hits the ground and stays there, the total mechanical energy is obviously not conserved. The general law of energy conservation, however, is still applicable. The initial potential energy of the stone gets transformed into the other forms of energy, heat and sound. Ultimately, sound after it is absorbed becomes heat. The total energy of the system, the stone pulls the surroundings, remains unchanged. The law of conservation of energy is thought to be valid across all domains of nature, from the microscopic to the macroscopic. It is routinely applied in the analysis of atomic, nuclear and elementary particle process. At the other end, all kinds of violent phenomena occur in the universe at all time. Yet the total energy of the universe, the most ideal isolated system possible, is believed to remain unchanged. Until the advent of Einstein's theory of relativity, the law of conservation of mass was regarded as another basic conservation law of nature, since matter was thought to be indestructible. It was and still is an important principle used for example, in the analysis of chemical reactions, a chemical reaction is basically a rearrangement of atoms among different molecules. If the total binding energy of reacting molecules is less than the total binding energy of the product molecules, the difference appears as heat and the reaction is exothermic. The opposite is true for the energy absorbing, that is endothermic reactions. However, since the atoms are merely rearranged but not destroyed, the total mass of the reactants is the same as the total mass of products in a chemical reaction. The change in the binding energy are too small to be measured as change in mass. According to Einstein's theory, mass m is equivalent to energy E given by the relation E is equal to mc square, where c is the speed of light in vacuum. In a nuclear process, mass gets converted to energy or vice versa. This is the energy which is released in a nuclear power generation and nuclear explosions. 
Energy is a scalar quantity, but all conserved quantities are not necessarily scalar. The total linear momentum and the total angular momentum, both vectors of an isolated system, are also conserved quantities. These laws can be derived from the Newton's laws of motion in mechanics, but their validity goes beyond mechanics. They are basic conservation laws of nature in all domains, even in those where Newton's law may not be valid. Besides their great simplicity and generality, the conservation laws of nature are very useful in practice too. It often happens that we cannot solve a full dynamics of a complex problem involving different particles and forces. The conservation laws can still provide useful results. For example, we may not know the complicated force that act during a collision of two automobiles. Yet momentum conservation laws enable us to bypass the complications and predict or rule out possible outcomes of the collision. In nuclear and elementary particle phenomena also, the conservation laws are very important tools for analysis. Indeed, using the conservation law of energy and momentum for beta decay, Wolfgang Pauli correctly predicted in 1931 the existence of a new particle now called neutrino emitted in beta decay along with the electron. Conservation laws have a deep connection with symmetries of nature that you will explore in more advanced courses in physics. For example, an important observation is that the laws of nature do not change with time. If you perform an experiment in your laboratory today and repeat the same experiment on the same object under the identical conditions after a year, the results are bound to be the same. It turns out that symmetry of nature with respect to translation that is displacement in time is equivalent to the law of conservation of energy. Likewise, space is homogeneous and there is no preferred location in the universe. To put it more clearly, the laws of nature are same everywhere in the universe. Caution: The phenomena may differ from place to place because of differing conditions at different locations. For example, acceleration due to gravity at moon is one-sixth than at earth. But the law of gravitation is the same both on moon and earth. This symmetry of the laws of nature with respect to translation in space gives rise to conservation of linear momentum. In the same way, isotropy of a space, no intrinsically preferred direction in space, underlies the law of conservation of angular momentum. The conservation laws of charge and other attributes of elementary particle can also be related to certain abstract symmetries. Symmetries of space and time and other abstract symmetries play a central role in the modern theories of fundamental forces of nature. Blue Box Conservation Laws in Physics Conservation of energy, momentum, angular momentum, charge, etc. Are considered to be the fundamental laws in physics. At this moment, there are many such conservation laws. Apart from the above four, there are others which mostly deal with quantities which have been introduced in the nuclear and particle physics. Some of the conserved quantities are called spin, baryon number, strangeness, hypercharge, etc but you need not worry about them. A conservation law is a hypothesis based on observations and experiments. It is important to remember that a conservation law cannot be proved. It can be verified or disproved by experiments. An experiment whose result is in conformity with the law verifies or substantiates the law. It does not prove the law. On the other hand, the single experiment whose result goes against the law is enough to disprove it. It would be wrong to ask somebody to prove the law of conservation of energy. This law is an outcome of our experience, our several centuries, and it has been found to be valid in all experiments. 
in mechanics and thermodynamics, electromagnetism, optics, atomic and nuclear physics, and other areas. Some students feel that they can prove the conservation of mechanical energy from the body falling under gravity by adding the kinetic and potential energies at a point and showing that it turns out to be constant. As pointed out above, that this is only a verification of law, not its proof. Albert Einstein Albert Einstein, born in Ulm, Germany in 1879, is universally regarded as one of the greatest physicists of all time. His astonishing scientific career began with the publication of three path-breaking papers in 1905. In the first paper, he introduced the notion of light quanta, now called photons, and used it to explain the features of photoelectric effect that the classical wave theory of radiation could not account for. In the second paper, he developed a theory of Brownian motion that was confirmed experimentally a few years later and provided a convincing evidence of atomic picture of matter. The third paper gave birth to a special theory of relativity that made Einstein a legend in his own lifetime. In the next decade, he explored the consequence of his new theory which included, among other things, the mass-energy equivalence enshrined in his famous equation E is equals to mc square. He also created the general version of relativity the general theory of relativity, which is the modern theory of gravitation. Some of the Einstein's most significant later contributions are the notion of stimulated emission introduced in an alternative derivation of Planck's black body radiation law, static model of the universe, which started modern cosmology, quantum statics of a gas of massive bosons, and a critical analysis of the foundation of quantum mechanics. The year 2005 was declared as International Year of Physics in recognition of Einstein's monumental contribution to physics in the year 1905, describing revolutionary scientific ideas that have since influenced all of modern physics. Satyendranath Bose Satyendranath Bose born in Calcutta in 1894 is among the great Indian physicists who made a fundamental contribution to the advance of science in the 20th century. An outstanding student throughout, Bose started his career in 1916 as a lecturer in physics in Calcutta University. Five years later, he joined Dhaka University. Here in 1924, in a brilliant flash of insight, Bose gave a new derivation of Planck's law, treating radiation of a gas of photons and employing new statistical methods of counting of photon states. He wrote a short paper on the subject and sent it to Einstein who immediately recognized its great significance, translated it in German and forwarded it for publication. Einstein then applied the same method to gas of molecules. The key new conceptual ingredient in Bose's work was that the particles were regarded as indistinguishable, a radical departure from the assumption that underlies the classical Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics. It was soon realized that the new Bose-Einstein statistics was applicable to the particle with integers spin and a new quantum statistics, Fermi Dirac statistics, was needed for particles with half integers spin satisfying Pauli's exclusion principle. Particles with integers spins are now known as bosons in honor of Bose. An important consequence of Bose-Einstein statistics is that a gas of molecule below a certain temperature will undergo a phase transition to a state where a large fraction of atoms populate the same lowest energy state. 
Some 70 years were to pass before the pioneering ideas of Bose, developed further by Einstein, were dramatically confirmed in observation of a new state of matter in a dilute gas of ultra-cold alkali atoms, the Bose-Einstein condensate. Sir C. V. Raman C. V. Raman was born on 7 November 1888 in Thiruvannakaval. He finished his schooling by the age of 11. He graduated from Presidency College, Madras. After finishing his education, he joined Financial Services of Indian Government. While in Kolkata, he started working on his area of interest at Indian Association of Cultivation of Science founded by Dr. Mahindra Lal Sirkar during his evening hours. His area of interest included vibrations, variety of musical instruments, ultrasonics, diffraction and so on. In 1917, he was offered professorship at Calcutta University. In 1924, he was elected fellow at the Royal Society of London and received Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930 for his discovery, now known as Raman Effect. The Raman effect deals with the scattering of light by molecules of a medium when they are excited to vibrational energy levels. This work opened totally new avenues for research for years to come. He spent his later years at Bangalore, first at Indian Institute of Science and then at Raman Research Institute. His work has inspired generation of young students. Summary of the chapter 1. Physics deal with the study of basic laws of nature and their manifestations in different phenomena. The basic laws of physics are universally and apply in widely different contexts and conditions. 2. The scope of physics is wide, covering a tremendous range of magnitude of physical quantities. Physics and technology are related to each other. Sometimes, technology gives rise to new physics. At other times, physics generate new technology. Both have direct impact on society. There are four fundamental forces in nature that governs the diverse phenomena of the macroscopic and the microscopic world. These are gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. Unification of different forces or domains in nature is a basic quest in physics. The physical quantities that remain unchanged in a process are called conserved quantities. Some of the general conservation laws in nature include the laws of conservation of mass, energy, linear momentum, angular momentum, charge, parity, etc. Some conservation laws are true for one fundamental force but not for the other. Conservation laws have a deep connection with symmetries of nature, symmetries of space and time, and other types of symmetries play a central role in modern theories of fundamental forces in nature.